I know all about your, you know, being, you know, on the radio and well, a little bowling show that you were on. But how did you get started doing the cartoon voices? Okay, well, I um, first of all, it's great to see you, Steve. Steve, by the way, Steve Dworkin is uh, one of the great, the great uh, engineers in New York, recording engineers. And he's worked at several of the studios that I've recorded at, and we've done a lot of, a lot of commercials together, probably hundreds. And, but I haven't seen him for, for several years. Wow. So, um, can you hear me yet? Do you know? I'm checking to see if he can hear you. Okay, but what Imagine. was his question? <laughs> his question was, oh, how did you get started with the right. cartoons? Yes, yes, that's right. Well, you know, I had always been, uh, uh, when I was little, I, was, I always did uh, voices. You know, my mom told me that, that uh, by the time I could talk, I was doing character voices, you know, Bugs Bunny and things like that. So I always, for some reason, I always, I always loved, you know, doing impressions of famous people and cartoon characters and things like that. So I did that, and then I told you about my radio career, and I used to always uh, incorporate voices and impressions on my radio show, too, my disc jockey show. And then once I got to New York, uh, I started doing commercials here. And then one day I got a call from my agent saying um, that there's going to, they wanted me to go to an audition for a, uh, a new uh, animated show, television show. It was going to be recorded in New York. It was called Thundercats. And um, so I went and, and went to the audition, and fortunately got 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 the role. Got, had you, you know, had the, you the ever done? Thundercats. Have you ever had you ever done uh, cartoons prior to that, Larry? Not cartoon series, but I had done had already been doing Count Chocula, Sonny the Cocoa Puffs Bird. Uh, you know, up here I won't go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve can I Steve started, can hear you now. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Hi, Steve. How are you, Larry? <laughs> I'm great, but I was saying wonderful things about you when you couldn't hear me. Oh, okay. And they're all true. I'll have to, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had been doing, uh, I had been doing, uh, I started doing uh, Sonny the Cocoa Puffs Bird in uh, 1978. Now, as a sad note to tonight, the, the gentleman who preceded me as Sonny the Cocoa Puffs Bird for many years on TV was Chuck McCann. Yeah. And uh, I'm sad to say Chuck passed away yesterday. I just yeah, heard yeah, I, I had read about that. Chuck McCann was one of the great, um, in New York for the longest time, I grew up watching him. He was one of the great uh, kids show hosts. Yeah. And then he ended up doing commercials and movies mm -hmm. and TV shows and, yeah. and cartoon voices. He's just a brilliant, brilliant uh, comedian and actor. Yeah, he was. He was brilliant. Uh, I never saw his kids show in New York, but I was reading about it, and it turns out he did seven days a week, two hours a day on uh -huh. that kids' television show. Can you imagine that? I, Steve, did you watch that when you were young? I, I saw it not every day, but I saw parts of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Chuck was a lovely guy, and I I, I got to work with him once um, on a Count Chocula commercial, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, he was on the phone from L.A., but uh, uh, he, because on the, when he was doing Count Chocula, they incorporated into some of the spots this character called uh, Grandpa, and Chuck McCann would do that voice too, you know, on the commercials. Well, this is now it's, you know, like only 10 years or so ago, I guess, and, and uh, I wanted to do a, uh, a commercial for Count Chocula, and they said, we got a surprise for you. Chuck McCann is going to be on the spot too, playing Grandpa. They wrote Grandpa back into a <laughs> into a, a commercial, so I was that was really an honor for me to, to work with him, you know. But that's how I got started. Uh, that was my first foray into animated things, Count Chocula. And then a couple of years later, I got the job as um, uh, Count Chocula. First was Cocoa Puffs, '78, and then in '79 I got the job as Count Chocula. And it wasn't until '80. Uh, I think we started recording Thundercats. That was yeah. that was amazing. I mean, Thundercats is, is a phenomenon, and the kids who grew up listening to Thundercats to this day are are huge fans. I know you've been to Comic Cons and you do signings. And how did Thundercats change your life? And did you have any expectation that something like that was going to happen? Uh, well, 
No, you can't. N nobody ever knows that something's going to be a big hit. You know, I mean, whether you're doing a TV show or, or a movie or a Broadway show, anything in the in the in the arts. You know, uh, we knew from the very beginning. When I say we, I mean the cast, the rest of the cast, and Thundercats, and all the people involved. After recording a few episodes, we knew we it was a good show. I mean. We knew the writing was great, and then once we saw the animation, that was fantastic. The music was great, so we knew it was a really great show. But that doesn't always always uh, guarantee success, you know, in, in the business. So it wasn't until the show had been on the air, which started in '85, had been on the air two or three months, and we first got ratings in, you know, and, and they were very, very good, and they kept going up and up. But I love to tell the story about how I first knew that uh, the show was a big hit. It had been on the air for maybe n nine or ten months, I think, mm -hmm. and it was um, it was a couple of weeks before Christmas, and I was shopping at Toys R Us. Well, when I walked into the Toys R Us, this I hadn't been there for a long time, but the last time I had been to Toys R Us, there were like three big aisles of of, of uh, He Man and Masters of the Universe, you know, those cartoon mm -hmm. shows, all their toys and all their action figures and things. And uh, one little section on the end of a, of a, a row was for Thundercats, because it, it was brand new. Well, this time when I went into, into uh, Toys R Us, there were three aisles. I mean, from one end of the store to the other, both sides, all with Thundercats merchandise. And I said to myself, wow, we got a hit show. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was the, really the first time I knew we, we really had something. But even then, uh, I don't think anybody connected with the show could have predicted that uh, 35 years later you know, we'd still be here talking about that show, you know. Uh, it's just been a phenomenon. How, 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 how you, there's a quote from you online that says, um, my kids, uh, I didn't become a, a star to my kids until, uh, until I did that show. Yeah, yeah, well. Yeah, of course, they were kids, and it was a cartoon show. Yeah, sure. I mean, before that, my kids knew what I did <coughs> for a living. <coughs> my oldest daughter, <coughs> pardon me, my oldest daughter, Carrie, was, let's see, she would have been, uh, yeah, 14 or so, 15 when, when Thundercats came out. So, you know, she was yeah, past that. You know? Right, 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 right. <laughs> but, right. Uh, but my smaller kids uh, were born in 84 and 88, so, you know. Uh, they they were there when it was happening, and they got to see, uh, you know, see all the what was going on with it. And um, they, uh, you know, people always ask me, your kids must really think it's great that you're doing these voices and all that. But I remember when my kids were small, and I used to like to read to them, you know, as dads do. And uh, I would be reading a book, having them on my lap, you know, and be reading a book. And I would say, um, and the old witch looked down and said, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get you. you. <laughs> and my kids would look up and say, they would say, Dad, just read the story. Just read the book. Don't do those little voices. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it, it disturbs us. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, okay, fine. I get that. I get that from my kid too. It's disturbing. Yeah, yeah. S Steve, wanted, do you want to hang out? Do you want? Do you have anything you want to ask? Um, no, it was just uh, it was just great to see Larry and hear him uh, hear his stories. I've got Larry's <laughs> stories, but I won't go into. Yeah, I was going to say you probably got some stories about me, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see you, Steve. Uh, and uh, and uh, we will talk. We will talk to you later. And if anybody else, by the way, people, if anybody wants to call in right now, like Steve did, just head over to askthemyourself.com. We are, of course, talking to the great Larry Kenny, who uh, was the voice of Lino and the voice Jackal Man and a bunch of others. Right? You were in Silverhawks. Yeah. Well, uh, in th first of all, uh, we did. Th we did. Um Several shows for Rankin Bass. That was a production company that, that uh, produced Thundercats. Then we did Silverhawks, and then we did a show called Tiger Sharks. Then we did a, a Saturday morning two-hour show called Comic Strip, mm. which contained um, um, Tiger Sharks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I don't remember, remember, but it was two hours on ABC right. on Saturday Saturday mornings. Right, and they were all Rankin Bass productions. And then after all those were recorded, uh, most of us in the same cast did uh, a, a several 
uh, animated holiday specials. And a couple of those still run every, you know, every holiday season. Star for Jeremy was one. The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus was a claymation thing. Mm -hmm. So for, for several years, we were all working together for Rankin Bass and became quite a, became quite a family, you know. <laughs> 